Well, good morning, everybody, and thanks for uh, joining us today uh, for this briefing on the strategic business case for a new mass transit system for uh, the Sunshine Coast to serve us uh, and our public transport in the future. As you will have been advised, the strategic business case will be released later this morning in the, and uh, with the agenda for documents for next Thursday's council meeting. So until council has considered this matter, it remains a draft strategic business case. The completion of the strategic business case is another vital step towards meeting the transport needs of our region and the generations to come as it continues to grow to over 500,000 people. As you know, our Sunshine Coast is one of the most livable places in Australia, so it's not surprising it, uh, it's, that it's also one of the fastest growing regions in the country. Our current population of 320,000 people will increase by an extra 190,000 people over the next two decades. Uh, and we know that unless we do something uh, about, around, about moving people around, we'll end up choking on our own success. This strategic business case considers the implications of those growth predictions uh, for the future of travelling around the Sunshine Coast and suggests uh, what needs to be done. Principally, it found <coughs> that the strong growth for our region is projected to continue. Uh, we need to reduce our reliance on the private motor vehicle transport to protect our lifestyle. Uh, there is a need to encourage greater urban consolidation or infill development in the urban coastal corridor to avoid the risks and costs of expensive greenfield development. The best way to do this is with a high quality integrated public transport system. That would include a new efficient mass transit system providing frequent and reliable services. The strategic business case shows that over time the mass transit system needs to service the most urbanised parts of the region connect and be connected to the North Coast rail line at Biwa. It also shows that a major investment like this uh, has to be delivered in stages. The strategic business case found 90% of all trips are local trips. So we need to concentrate on that first. And they are an average of about 10 kilometres. A better integrated and more convenient public transport system would cater for uh, many of those local trips, uh, so that would help us to reduce the growth of private motor vehicle usage. To do that, public transport has to be accessible and easy to use, so people choose it over the motor car. The strategic business case indicates that the logical first stage of the new system would be from Maroochydore to Kiwana, via the coastal corridor through Maloolabar and Batinia. And this would connect Maroochydore to a significant population catchment and provide the catalyst for significant urban transformation throughout that route. As you would also know, past studies, have, uh, which have been the subject of extensive community engagement, have suggested light rail is the best mass transit solution for local travel. While that remains Council's preference, we're not locking into light rail at this point in time. We are looking, uh, we will be looking at that again as part of the next phase of the uh, work in the preliminary business case. Just as we will look at other mass transit solutions to determine the most viable and serviceable solution. As I said at the beginning, this is the next step in our pursuit of a better integrated public transport system for our Sunshine Coast. A system and a network that ultimately is the responsibility of the state government. But because the state has been reluctant to do the necessary work, our council has taken up the cudgel to undertake the important planning and assessment studies for the benefit of the residents of our region and indeed the broader network. Because at the end of the day, we want our residents and our region to be better positioned to secure the necessary investment from state and federal funding uh, 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 and those levels of governments in a contemporary and integrated public transport system that meets the needs of our community. There is, however, still some distance to travel, if you'll pardon the pun, uh, before we reach that goal. Next week, Council will consider the strategic business case, completing the first three phases uh, in the business case development. The second phase, the preliminary business case, will pr proceed in earnest, enabling the third and final stage, which is the detailed business case, to be ready by the end of 2021. The detailed business case will be prepared in partnership with the Queensland Government, um, who, after considerable lobbying, have recently announced that they will match Council's contribution of $7.5 million uh, to make up $15 million uh, to undertake that study. And we have that commitment from the Premier and the Minister for Transport, who was here just last week 
and reconfirmed. All three phases of the business case uh, process need to be completed in order for the project to be considered for funding from the Queensland and Commonwealth governments. That process takes time, but if we don't get started and don't follow the process, we won't go anywhere. I'd liken this to the hard yards we've put in in establishing the solar farm, uh, to securing the underground submarine cable and the delivery of a new city centre. They all took time, but in the end, the effort has been worth it. I'm just as confident we'll get the right results with this project as well. The work, is, uh, the work that we've been doing here also complements the work being undertaken uh, under the leadership of the federal government, looking at the business case for a fast rail solution from Brisbane to the Sunshine Coast. Council is a partner in that work as well and fully supports what is being done there. And as I've always said, <clears throat> the city to city solution between Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast that fast rail would provide uh, and needs to be complemented by a suburb to suburb solution, which is what the mass transit business case is all about. So when people arrive back on the Sunshine Coast on a fast rail, they can hop on to uh, whatever our mass transit solution is and take them north and south on a suburb to suburb basis to get them home. If we get all, the, all of this work done and are successful in attracting funding, our current timetable of having the first stage of the mass transit system from Maroochydore to Kiwana operational by 2026 can be achieved. But there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of water to flow under the bridge before we can reach that point. But the Sunshine Coast will certainly be a better place for it. And our kids and grandkids will thank us for our foresight and commitment to a better, more sustainable and prosperous future. Thank you. Happy to take any questions. The, you're talking about the infield development, trying to, I guess, promote that or push that. What, what are the scheme amendments or sort of what heights densities are we talking along that corridor? What's going to be? Well, that hasn't been determined yet. Um, uh, that would need to be considered over time. But clearly, you to, to um, make it work, make it pay, you would need higher densification along the Nicklin Way, for instance, uh, in areas around where those um, uh, stations uh, or hubs would be. Do you see the industrial area moving out, maybe making way for, for some of this? Oh, I think, well, I think all those things would need to be considered. I mean, at the end of the day, um, if we're going to have a mass transit system that maximises its capacity, it's about putting it near where people are and clearly the Nicklin Way is the, is the ideal route. Uh, and I mean, if you've had a look at the, the, the route, routes that have been demonstrated here this morning, between fast rail and um, the mass transit, uh, there will be, uh, you know, ideally people can easily access a, a, a station, you know, within sort of one kilometre. That, is that crucial too as well, the, the access to, <coughs> I think we've crossed that a little bit before. So that's, just say that again. That access within that sort of first couple of hundred metres seems to be crucial to it as well, to its success, isn't it? What, what do you mean by the access? People have got to have pretty close access to Oh, absolutely. To yeah, no. Well, look, if you're going to be a better alternative to the car, the car that might be in your garage, then easily accessing um, a, a station to be able to board uh, the mass transit, whatever that solution is, uh, is very important. Because it's got to be seen as a better, faster, more convenient and ultimately a cheaper option for people. In terms of the design process, I guess, and the council's thought process behind it, how much is it for residents and how much is it to com accommodate tourists, I guess, as well, being able to get to all the different beaches and things? Well, I guess, as I said earlier, about 90% of trips on the Sunshine Coast currently are around an average of 10 kilometres. Um, the majority of those would be locals, you know, going to the shops, taking the kids to school, going to work, um, going to the hospital, the library. Um, so the more of those people that can see the benefit of hopping on a mass transit system that will take them to their destination or nearby, um, it starts to see a, a reason for modal shift. Uh, and, and we've no doubt, and if you, you've only got to look at what's going on in the major cities of the world now, or even uh, Brisbane City, you know, people who live in areas where there is excellent public transport do not have motor cars uh, or are slowly moving out of motor cars. And particularly as younger generations come through, they're seeing lesser need for motor cars. So it's a, it's a better option for our environment. Uh, it, it eliminates congestion because you're moving massive numbers of people as opposed to, you know, perhaps many cars with only one person in them.
So I, I think, um, you know, as we add another 190,000 people, we need to have a suitable transportation solution. So obviously light rail hasn't been locked in as a, as a definite option yet, but what other sort of technologies and things will you be looking at as well in the preliminary bits? Oh, uh, look, I, I think we will need to look at all sorts of rail, and clearly we've got uh, a, a, a corridor set aside for um, heavy rail, being the Camcos corridor. Generally, we would think that's too far removed from the majority of population to make a sensible suburb to suburb connection. Uh, but fast rail is a project that's been addressed at the moment by uh, the federal government, and council is, a, is, is committed to that process as well. But again, by its nature, fast rail doesn't stop very often. And where it does stop will require massive car parks unless there's an alternative for that sort of last mile of transportation, which is where we would see the mass transit filling the void. Because, again, we don't have you know, necessarily those large tracts of land that would be required for parking, and nor do, uh, do, does council want to be caught uh, having to fund those at the end. Uh, but it could also be, you know, the, the advancement of autonomous travel. Um, it could be um, trackless trams. Uh, it could be a, a sort of a, 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 a forerunner bus service um, that, uh, that people um, uh, could use. So ultimately, you know, we, I guess when, you, when you're spending public money, you want to be able to look people in the eye and say, we've considered all the options and this is the best option. I make no secret of the fact that with all the work that Council's done around light rail and the evidence we've seen from the Gold Coast and are now seeing from Canberra and indeed other cities around the world, we think light rail is um, uh, the, you know, a great option. But let's examine all the options. And the reality is, given we're a very linear location in terms of our coastline, but there are lots of people who still live to the west uh, and we need to be able to provide an integrated service. So in the end, it will probably be a multiplicity of um, uh, transport options that will link people to whatever that major spine has chosen to be. What are some of the other strategies Council will use to try and drive mm -hmm. down road travel demand as well, to try and encourage people off, off their cars and out of their cars? Well, I, I think you've got to be able to give people options. Um, and again, this is um, a responsibility of the state government. Uh, it needs to be part of their network. Um, so uh, we, we need the state government to be committed about providing whatever is determined to be the best option. Um, you know, I guess we are still in a phase where we are um, in some ways in attempting to cater for people using their car through the development of multi-deck car parks, i.e. Brisbane Road and in the CBD of Maroochydore, um, you know, that, that will continue to encourage people to use their cars. Now, the, at some point, we've got to try and limit that, but it's about trying to understand where we're going to and what's coming at us from the other side. Now, with this actual formal process that's in train, what confidence do you have that, um, because it's a state government project that local state members are on board with this process as well and that they would honour that process um, should that process come up with a good solution for the Sunshine Coast? Yeah. Well, I, I would think that uh, the local state members, and I meet regularly with Andrew Powell, uh, who then acts as a conduit to the other state members, um, you know, they're, they're supportive of the need for a, a mass transit system on the Sunshine Coast. Um, I would like to think that they're very grateful that this council is doing the hard work for them and has got a commitment from the state government for seven and a half million to put with our own seven and a half million um, uh, to ensure that you know we are keeping pace with competitive regions, um, uh, with the demands of consumers. Uh, and as I say, particularly with younger people, they're, they're very uh, happy to forego motor car travel providing there's an effective public transport network. Do you see that if we didn't do this, there would be um, an effect on um, economic development, our ability to sort of uh, develop our economy, not, ne not necessarily just grow the region, but yes. grow the economy, um, mm. if it was constrained by poor, poor yeah, yeah. transport? 
Well, I think um, <clears throat> if you think about the sort of vehicles that are on the road at any point in the day, you've got lots of people who their work is in their boat, in their car to some extent. They're tradespeople or they're delivering delivering items, um, and and having them sort of stopped in congestion is a huge impact on productivity. Now, you know, we, we can't afford to see that happen, can't afford to see ourselves be uncompetitive compared to other regions. Um, so the more people that we can get out of their cars who live nearby that major mass transit route and use that, then the more the road is freed up for those people who don't have that option. I mean, you, if you're a, a tradie, you, it's not going to be terribly convenient that to catch the the the, uh, the mass transit to your next job, or if you're delivering mattresses or loaves of bread or anything else. So, um, and also by freeing up that uh, that congestion, we you know we you know we effectively create more capacity for the other people who live to the west in the Sunshine Coast who also come in each day to perhaps to work uh, or to bring kids to school or shop or whatever, uh, because we've got a, a, a lot more of those living in the vicinity of the mass transit utilising that service. In terms of, um, I know you touched on that this would be, you know, this first stage is, you know, the one of the first options for the local people of the Sunshine Coast. Are you also considering what would be best for tourism as well um, up here? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, again, think if you could get on the fast rail in Brisbane um, and then alight the fast rail at Kuana, walk across the platform, hop on a light rail that takes you to your destination you know, points north and south on the uh, on the Sunshine Coast. That that would be a great outcome. Um, the nice thing about a light rail network, and this has been evidenced on the Gold Coast, is <clears throat> when you've got that sort of connectivity, it doesn't matter where you stay. Like the event you're going to might be in, uh, in our case, Malulava, but you can easily stay in Kalounda, you can easily stay uh, in Maruchidor or anywhere in between uh, at a level of accommodation or service that suits your needs and then jump on the light rail to go to the event. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a challenge we have now because, you know, people feel as though you've got to be staying somewhere near where the event's going to be staged because I've got to, I've got to get to it and get home again. The other thing I, I think that shouldn't be underestimated, <clears throat> um, and this is something the state needs to take very care, pay very careful attention to, is that with an effective mass transit system along the, um, the uh, Nicollin Way, uh, the future of affordable housing becomes more favourable. If people haven't got to have a garage or a carport as part of their residence because they don't have a car, um, then the cost of building those apartments, and they'll need to be, uh, we'll see lots of new developments along that area. Um, some work we've had done with a futurist suggests that you know people could have somewhere between four and five thousand dollars more in their pockets each year to spend on other things. Uh, utilise public transport, uh, not have the costs associated with a car of their own, not have to pay for the you know building a, a carport or a garage to to house cars now that spend 90% of their time sitting inside them. So I, I think there's a there's a, a, a profound amount of benefit attached, um, and and if we think about the alternatives, 190,000 people, um, you know building another couple of lanes down the Nicklin Way, going to be pretty tough given the build-up area that it is now. So um, I, don't, I don't see that as a very cost-effective solution. Um, and, and again, I think we can, we can look to the Gold Coast and the great success they've enjoyed from their light rail uh, and um, you know, see that as very much a test case. And, and we've continued to work closely with the Gold Coast since before they even started. So we, um, you know, we're really serious about this and we, we need to make sure that the state government uh, and, and that might be a different state government after the next election. Um, and, uh, you know, but whichever party's in power, the Sunshine Coast is one of their biggest cash cows at the moment. About $1.6 billion a year paid in taxes, various state government taxes to the state government. Uh, we want a fair share of that back. Um, and we can continue to be a cash cow for the state government if they grease the wheels. Um, of, uh, of public transport on the Sunshine Coast because uh, the, the threat otherwise is we do choke ourselves through congestion on our own success uh, and that limits the opportunity for the state to continue to grow its taxation base. Is there scope for private sector in this? Could they come in, maybe fund 
the rail in exchange for land parcels to develop on the corridor? It's possible, yeah. It's possible. Mayor, how important is that identification of that corridor or that first stage as this is the preferred uh, mass transit uh, route yep. to other developments that have been identified around that corridor, say, for example, the expansion of the, um, the stadium and things like that? Yep. I mean, is, is it important for other investment to have said this will be the corridor and this will be a mass transit corridor? No, no doubt about it. I mean, it, it will be a profound change. And, I mean, we've got uh, Elton John coming to the stadium uh, in March of next year for two nights, and there'll be about 20,000 people there each night. <clears throat> you know, currently, we, we do manage it reasonably well, but with a mass transit facility that could take people away from that facility more quickly, that would be so much easier for everybody. Um, uh, so, so it will have a profound effect in terms of the way people think about... Um, you know, choosing where they live, the sort of apartments I want to live in, uh, the investment that will be required from uh, the development sector to undertake that. I think it creates a whole range of new opportunities. And, and importantly, and this is I think a really critical point, is that we, we whilst we'll see higher density, I'm not necessarily talking about high rise, uh, but certainly higher density um, uh, along the Nicklin Way, so well back from uh, the key uh, coastline. What business case so heavily redacted in an RTI process daily? Uh, well, I think we want to put the business case to uh, councillors and get the process underway before we necessarily get the daily publishing it. The um, I understand the commissioner wasn't satisfied with the um, the reasons for the redaction. I, I I'm not aware of that. I've not been told that. I believe they wrote to council maybe even Monday. Sorry, you I, got it. I believe they, they wrote to council. Might have even been earlier this week. Or? The document's been released tonight. Yeah, okay. Yep, don't know, no Scott. No. no, no. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we want to be able to present this to our community in an organised and orderly fashion as we're doing here today. Um, uh, and and in, in fairness, to provide it to all media simultaneously. Okay. Um, yeah, Timothy, ABC. Um, when we talk about the uh, Olympics uh, bid for 2032, transport is always you know, mentioned in the conversation somewhere. How do you see this plan fitting into that? Good question. Um, there, are, there are three critical pieces of work that have been done on an SEQ level through the SEQ Council of Mayors who have been the architects and driving force behind SEQ's bid for the 2032 Olympics. Um, and they are the uh, People Mass Movement Study, uh, which was conducted to demonstrate what would be required to move people around SEQ, um, not only to cater for an Olympic Games, but just to cater for the growth we're going to have over the next couple of decades. Uh, the second uh, critical element, again, pursued by the Council of Mayors, despite it being uh, policy of the coalition government, is a city deal, a city deal for South East Queensland, which we've now got sign-off on between the mayors, uh, the state uh, and the federal government. Uh, and finally, uh, the Olympics uh, as a stimulator uh, of major investment to bring forward critical infrastructure, um, you know, perhaps 10 or 15 years than it would have otherwise taken us to get. So think about uh, the Olympic Games and events being staged on the Sunshine Coast. People can hop on a fast train and effectively be here at the venue in 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, so th this investment is going to be vital for that.